Welcome to SiliconAngle.tv's The Cube. We are here live in uh, Santa Clara, Silicon Valley in California. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and we are here live to bring you extensive coverage of the Cassandra Summit 12, uh, where Cassandra community is going to explore technical tracks uh, and all the future of NoSQL, which is the new hotness. The big debate has been uh, structured databases, unstructured database, the database wars, database confusion. The bottom line with cloud, mobile, and social, you're seeing a huge surge in, in pressure from database vendors to capture that unstructured data and put in the structures. Again, I'm John Furrier with SiliconAngle.com. I'm joined with my co-host for this show. Jeff Kelly from Wikibon.org, the best analyst in the business for big data. Jeff, welcome uh, to Cube 2. We were just at the Hadoop Summit. We were, not too long ago. We, uh, the big data world is uh, ours to, uh, to our oyster, where we, fit, we feed on all this great knowledge and, and want to share that with the world. Uh, the Cube is our flagship telecast. We, we extract the signal from the noise to share that with you. Jeff, just my commentary right now on, on the Cassandra marketplace, and we've talked about this at uh, Hortonworks uh, Hadoop Summit where we had um, um, Jeffrey Moore on talking about crossing mm -hmm. the chasm. And we actually had Billy, Billy the CEO of DataStax, on the Cube at uh, Hortonworks Hadoop Summit. And we talked about this database war or this database vendor contest, like NASCAR. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like they're all in, in position, they're jockeying, Hadoop's out front, huge momentum with Hadoop. You got Couch, you got Mongo, you got Cassandra, and that someone's going to have to slingshot and make a move. But right. it's not a winner-take-all game, is it? Not necessarily. I mean, there are different use cases that apply to different uh, NoSQL databases. So, uh, you know, there, there's it's it's not uh, necessarily a winner-take-all situation. But uh, you know, I definitely agree. There's going to be a couple winners and, a, and some and a lot of losers. So uh, it really it really matters in terms of community involvement, community momentum. Uh, and kind of, uh, you know, the community as supporting uh, these open source projects is really important. One of the things that we've been noticing in the big data trend here, folks, is that uh, we've been on the ground with theCUBE and SiliconAngle.tv with Wikibon, uh, research team uh, with SiliconAngle. We've been at Hadoop World, the original. We've been at all the Hadoop Worlds, all the Hadoop Summits. Uh, now we're at the Cassandra Summit and we'll be doing the, the big, covering the big data like a blanket on SiliconAngle.com and for research go to wikibon.org. But one thing that's really clear is that we are in a inflection point as a marketplace, Jeff, where you're seeing this massive shift with mobile computing and cloud really energizing the application marketplace, which leads to the kinds of conversations um, to go back in, in tech history, Microsoft, Intel, Wintel created that revolution in computing. Um, and recently VMware hired a new CEO, Pat Gelsinger, mm -hmm. a friend of theCUBE from EMC, is now the CEO of VMware. And you see Cloud Foundry, you see the hypervisor in the enterprise, you see the consumerization of IT. All that infrastructure is in position with converged infrastructure to explode out and leverage on mobile computing. And that application growth is putting a lot of pressure on the database market. And you're seeing NoSQL being a big part of that. Um, but the marketplace we've heard from data scientists to programming is that specialism and specialists software is moving to general purpose. What's right. your take on that? And talk about your research and some of your findings you mm -hmm. talk to vendors. Obviously NoSQL, it's hard to use. You know, HBase and Cassandra are very difficult, some say. They're trying to be easier. Right. What's your take on the whole specialism to general purpose databases and, and how does that affect the application market? Well, uh, certainly as you say, it's, you know, a lot of the uh, NoSQL databases platforms out there are difficult to use. And, and what we're seeing from vendors like DataStax and others is essentially trying to put this wrapper around uh, NoSQL databases to make them easier to use. Uh, and in some cases, bringing in SQL-like capabilities uh, kind of on top uh, to kind of mask some of the complexity. Um, you know, for instance, we're seeing a company called uh, Hadapt, which is out in Cambridge, Mass, uh, where I'm at, uh, and they're doing some interesting things where they're building a platform, uh, essentially, where they integrate natively SQL into a Hadoop environment, uh, and essentially abstract, abstract away the complexity so that the user uh, doesn't necessarily know uh, which processing model is being used. So, yeah. you know, we're seeing uh, methods like that, which you could call that more generalization, making Hadoop, making some other big data platforms more general. Um, you know, they're doing some interesting work there. Of course, DataStax, with their enterprise uh, product, kind of combining Hadoop, Cassandra, and Solar to make it more applicable across use cases. So, you know, we're seeing... Uh, well, you see, you mentioned Hadap, which is a startup in California, uh, Massachusetts. Yeah. Well, we have some other startups that we've been running into. One Wired Magazine profiled um, Squirrel um, mm -hmm. application. I forget the name of the company. Uh, yeah, Squirrel. It's called uh, Squirrel? A squirrel, and they're working on an open source project called Accumulo. Accumulo, right. but that's cell level data. Right, they essentially took, uh, the, the, the guys from Squirrel, when they were internal at the NSA, uh, you know, they needed to, obviously they needed some big data uh, capabilities, 
Uh, so they looked at Google Bigtable, decided it wasn't secure enough, so they kind of re-engineered it uh, to include sub-level security from the ground up natively. Uh, and now they've spun out of the NSA and they've, they're starting Squirrel, kind of a, a soft launch this week, I believe. And, uh, Essentially, what they're they're kind of positioning uh, Accumulo as a competitor to Cassandra HBase, another NoSQL database, but with better security, they say, better performance, uh, scalability. You don't lose as much data when you scale at rapid uh, ingest rates. So you know we're seeing all these different NoSQL databases come at. They're all kind of attacking a similar problem, but they're all doing it in kind of different ways. And there are definitely subtle different use cases among each one. So it's not necessarily a winner take all, but. You know, they're, they're, not gonna, they're probably not enough room for all the different vendors we're seeing you, right now. You mentioned use cases. Folks, we are going to drill down on the use cases here. We're going to have uh, Jonathan Ellis, the CTO, co-founder of Datastacks on, to really get down and talk about some of the real use cases and get in the weeds with the tech and really address some of the criticisms and yet the opportunity that Cassandra brings to the table. Cassandra has been in the, the I would say, the shadows relative to Hadoop in terms of the, on the hype meter, so we want to explore that. Obviously, uh, in their keynote, uh, Jonathan and Billy, the CEO of Datastacks, pointed out that just in production alone, the Datastacks uh, ecosystem, the Cassandra ecosystem, has really grown over the past year. We want to drill on, on what's going on in the production environments. Mm -hmm. um, but really what's going on is that, that, that the big data world is really about, there are a variety of tools and use cases, so the diversity of use cases is so w wide, that brings up the, there isn't going to be one winner. We have Cassandra, right. We got HBase, we got Mongo. Mm -hmm. We have different approaches, um, Jeff, and we're going to explore that. We're also going to have um, Eddie Slattery, the big data evangelist from Splunk. Mm -hmm. Splunk has been really, um, uh, um, been giving a lot of kudos with their analytics. Um, and this is an area that Cassandra has suffered in the, in, the, right. in, 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 the, in the forums and in Quora around the analytics. Splunk has stepped up to take that role. Uh, also, we're going to have Adrian uh, Cockcroft, who's going to do a killer demo. He'll be coming on theCUBE right after his demo where he's going to be spinning up uh, in real time 48 node cluster yeah. on Amazon. CTO of Netflix. CTO so, yeah, of Netflix. Um, and they've been in the press lately around the, the crash of uh, the uh, storm on the East Coast, the quote, power generators. Right, right. Um, I really want to ask Adrian, really, you know, is it a one cloud fits all? Uh, is, is it a one database fits all? I want to talk about those use cases, so. Right. Um, and Cassandra fits into that equation uh, with this kind of being able to distribute geographically and uh, kind of prevent potentially those kind of downtime uh, yeah. events. And, and just my overall take on the Cassandra community right now is that it is not, it's, it's, it's not a dying community by far. It's really robust. It's a packed house. I was in the keynote. Absolutely jam-packed. This community is active. Um, and they're, I don't want to say a chip on their shoulder, Jeff, but they definitely have seen Hadoop take the limelight. And you know, we're seeing companies like Hortonworks within Apache kicking some serious butt out there. Uh, yep. H Catalog recently announced, they announced a new data platform. Cloudera has been kind of quiet lately. I mean, um, we've seen them, they've been on the queue. We love Cloudera as well. So, um, obviously we love Hadoop, we love open source, mm -hmm. we love open source and scale out. Uh, what's your take before we get into the guests today? What are you expecting to hear today and what are you looking for? Well, I think you nailed it earlier, use cases. Well, I think what it boils down to is what is Cassandra good for? What are the use cases it's supporting today and what use cases will it support tomorrow? And let's uh, you know, focus on you know, the right tool for the right job, I think is important. So you know, there's a lot of, especially in the press, there's a lot of talk about what's, who's going to win. Is it going to be Hadoop? Is it going to be another platform? Well, I don't think it's going to be just one. There are different, uh, you know, horses for courses, as they say. So uh, what I really want to drill down to in today. Horses for horses or horses for courses? Horses for courses, excuse horses me. Horses for horses. Horses for horses. That's Dave Vellante's yeah. horse analogy. It's, and it's a good one, isn't it? Um, so we'll definitely want to drill down into that, into use cases. Um, you know, talk about a little bit about some of those challenges that the community faces in terms of uh, you know, consistency, read-write question. There was, read was a great post on Quora that uh, I read that I really liked, which was um, Alpha Geek said, hey, you know, it's not about the, the, uh, the tools, it's about the, the brain of the developer. Mm -hmm. And any developer with chops will look at a problem and not try to force a stack into the solution. And that there's a variety of different stacks you can take um, into solving a problem. So that brings up the whole personality. So one of the things I'm looking for in this, uh, in this CUBE uh, event today is to find out what is the personality of the Cassandra community. Mm -hmm. um, what are these, who are these folks? What are they into? What's their, what's the demographics? What's the psychographic? What's their mindset? What yeah. use cases are they pivoting on? What are they doubling down on? Um, and also, what's the, what's the feeling around, you know, the other databases, Mongo, Couch, um, HBase. We you know Billy 
Billy Bosworth slammed HBase in his keynote. He basically implied that it's difficult to use. I had that on Social Cam, Mark Hopkins. If you grab my Social Cam feed, I got the Billy, Billy's slam on HBase. Uh, we want to drill down on that today as well too. So a lot of great stuff coming on all day today here inside siliconangle.com. It's theCUBE uh, with Wikibon's Jeff Kelly. I'm John Furrier. This is our flagship telecast. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. We write right back with our, our guests and our next guest is going to be Jonathan Ellis, the CTO, co-founder of Datastax, who will go in and we'll talk about what's going on with Cassandra, within Apache, and within some of the, some of the key tech aspects of